summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Tia and today I'm talking about our Challenger Analyst list of the 10 best supports on patch 11.6. While ADCs are the ones that pump out the damage, everyone knows the totally unbiased truth that support gap is what truly determines the better bot lane. So with that in mind, hit that sub button and let's get into it. We'll start things off with Leona. Anytime tanky CC supports are in the meta, Leona stands out as the best of them all. This is due to her flexibility. Even in her hardest matchups, she's able to find some opportunities to go in. While champs with reliable interrupts can stop her E, she still has her ult, which gives her pick potential from up to 1,200 units away. So with potential to engage from double Ash's auto attack range, low cooldown CC to constantly disrupt once she's in the fray, and her W making her incredibly tanky, even with the support's relatively low budget build, it's no wonder she's our pick for this patch's most OP support. For your build, you'll start with Relic Shield and pick up tier two boots as quickly as you can, usually opting for Mobis to give you strong roaming during lane phase and helping to make catches later on. Then you'll grab Solari as your mythic, Zeke's to give a carry a damage boost against opponents you CC, and then Knight's Vow. Your last item should either be Thorn Mail or Abyssal Mask, depending on whether you need Grievous Wounds or just want to double down on giving allies more damage against CC targets. Having a great support is definitely an important part of winning bot, but it's even better when your pick synergizes with your ADCs. For example, when I'm locking in Leona, I'd much rather see a Tristana or Draven than like an Ezreal. That brings us to today's question of the day. What's your favorite bot lane duo? Personally, I love Zyra Kate. I am a huge Zyra player. I love to abuse her range and damage, and Kate is the best champion to go with me. Even against strong engaged champs, you shove them under their turret and poke them so low, they're afraid to go in. But that's just my personal taste. I wanna know what you guys think. Let us know in the comment section down below. Up next, we have Thresh. While most supports are generally locked into one style of play, either diving in, peeling, or healing, shielding allies, Thresh's unique, versatile kit allows him to fill multiple roles, depending on the team comps. You can take an opportunistic approach by just fishing for hooks to look for picks, go more aggressive by flashing in for a catch with Slay, or play simply to peel in teamfights, using your Flay and ult to stop enemy divers. In some cases, you can even just play for Lantern, sitting back even behind your back line to give immobile carries a way to get away from otherwise inescapable threats, like Jarvan's ult or Olaf, who can't be directly peeled. For your items, you're going to start out with Relic Shield and build into Boots of Swiftness. For your Mythic, the best all-around item is Solari. But if your team has plenty of beefiness and you'd rather enable them with more engage power, Shirelia's is a good option too. Zeke's and Knight's Vow are your next two items, with the last slot being for Redemption, unless you need a situational item like Mikhail's. Moving on, we have a couple of enchanters, starting off with my bae, Lulu. While most enchanters focus on scaling up for team fighting, usually coasting by in lane phase, with Lulu, you can actually bully many of the lower damage or melee champs in the lane thanks to the huge damage boost she gets to her auto trades from her passive. I'm not saying to run in a straight line at engage and hook champs to your death, but when you can block their engage on minions, their cooldowns are down, or they're going after your carry, make sure you punish them with as much damage as you can dish out. Aside from punishing in lane, Lulu's main goal is to buffer ADC, turbocharging their damage with W's attack speed and E granting them picks to give them more damage on each attack while using ult to keep them alive. That said, don't autopilot by throwing all of your abilities on your carry every time. Sometimes you may need to use your W to shut down a fed enemy instead. For your build, you'll start off with Spell Thieves Edge and Rush Lucidity Boots. As with any enchanter, you're going to rush the holy trifecta of Moonstone Renewer, Ardent Sensor, and Staff of Flowing Water to enable your teammates, particularly your ADC, to carry hard. Your last item should be Chemtech Putrefire, but if the enemy team is pretty healing reliant, you can pick it up early in your build if no allies are investing in Grievous Wounds. If it's not needed at all, you can also just pick up Redemption or Mikhail's. One quick note though about your runes, if you're playing to hard bully in lane, run Scorch over Gathering Storm. Our second enchanter is Janna. Like Lulu, Janna is capable of more than just idly waiting by in lane phase until it's time to teamfight. In lane, you'll want to constantly look for W poke on your opponents, following it up with an auto or two to stack up your Spell Thieves Edge. With the movement speed from her passive and W, Janna is also a pretty strong roaming support, so be sure to go for that at the right times, usually when the enemy laners take their resets and you don't have a reason to go back to base. In teamfights, your main focus is peeling for your backline carries, so make sure you're not cowering behind them. 
Instead, try to position in front of them so you can use your Q and ult to interrupt enemy divers. For your items, your standard build will follow the exact same path that Lulu's did. Start Spell Thieves, Rush Lucidity, pick up Moonstone, Ardent, and Staff of Flowing Water, and top things off with Chemtech Putrefire, Redemption, or Mikhail's. If you're feeling a bit feisty, you can also go a more ability power heavy build with Janna. While it's definitely more expensive and has a bit more risk since you'll be stacking, Janna makes good use of the AP, turning it into bonus AD for her shielded carry. If you want to go this route, swap out Staff of Flowing Water and Chemtech for Magi's and Rabadon's. Before we go on, I just want to take a minute to mention the sale we're running on subscriptions over at ProGuides.com. With a sub, you get access to all of our courses, unlimited chats with our coaches, and if you book a session, you get a discounted rate. Just use discount code RANKUP2021 for 20% off your sub. With all the resources we have to offer, you can easily attain your season's goals. Now, without further ado, let's get back on topic. Even when Kangas isn't hosting a video, we have to mention his main man, Bard. Like Thrush, Bard brings a completely unique kit to the Rift that gives you an insane amount of playmaking potential. Your Q gives you hard-hitting trades that stun, leaving your opponents unable to trade back. W lets you leave heals for later for your laners as you roam. Your portals open up new gank pathways that would otherwise not be possible. And ult can make picks, negate Karthus' ult, or completely cancel out Rift Herald's charge on a tower. On top of all that, Bard is technically an infinitely scaling champ, with the ramping slow and constantly increased damage on his Meepa-powered autos making him easily capable of soloing out ADCs in the mid to late game. The set of items Bard can purchase would be report-worthy on any other champ. It all starts out pretty normal with Shard of True Ice, Lucidity Boots, and Solari. But after that, it's just a seemingly random grab bag of items taken from different roles. Cosmic Drive may generally be built on Control Mages, but Ability Haste is a valued stat for Bard, and the movement speed helps with roaming around the map. Deadman's gives even more roaming power, while Rapid Fire Cannon's bonus damage can actually come in clutch, allowing you to land otherwise out of reach targets with the massive slow from your Meep empowered autos. If you'd rather spam your spells even more, you can also swap out Rapid Fire Cannon for Vigilant Wardstone, which gives a whopping 40 Ability Haste. A mix between support and battle mage, Morgana support can be played in one of two ways. The first involves building and playing like an enchanter, sitting back, looking for cues to set up her allies, and using E to keep them safe, but never going in herself. The second is building a tankier set of items, still looking for cues to make picks, but also getting into the fight herself with ult, over sitting in the back line. The option we're encouraging you to use is the latter, using her CC to force fights over the more passive, team-reliant Enchanter style. For the tankier style, here's your build. You'll start with Spell Thieves Edge and Rush Moby Boots to look for roams and picks every chance you get. You'll then build into Imperial Mandate for the damage after you land a snare and the movement speed to keep up with foes that you ult. Since this build is all about going in, you'll need Azonias to avoid being blown up. After that, grab Zeke's to give a carry more damage on the target's UCC and finish things off with either Demonic Embrace, Morello, or a Situational Support item. Again, we encourage this over the Enchanter build since it gives you a bit more control over your game's results. But if you want to try the other one anyways, you'll pretty much just copy the builds from Lulu and Janna. Getting back to some of the tankier engaged supports, we have Alistar. While he can definitely make a strong kill lane in some matchups, with his somewhat low range and telegraphed engages, it's not always easy to just go in on the 2v2, especially if you're going against laners that can shove you in constantly or those that have disengaged like Thresh and Janna. For that reason, many of the best Alistar players know that sometimes you just have to forfeit the lane altogether and leave your ADC to do their best to farm safely under tower. If you repeatedly roam mid and pick up kills for your laner, the gold gap they have will easily make up for your ADC being down a bit in CS. On top of that, the enemy mid laner will likely tilt off the face of the earth and into the Milky Way after the fifth gank with no help from his own support. For your items, you'll be going Relic Shield first and picking up Moby's ASAP to look for roams. For your Mythic, you'll either go Solari as a generalist item or Turbo Chem Tank if you're the primary engage and need to be able to go in without being limited to your flash cooldown. After that, you'll pick up typical tanky support items like Zeke's, Dead Man's Plate, and Knight's Vow with the option of Thornmail or Redemption if they would be more useful in your game. Next up, we have Nautilus. With tanky champs, you generally see two types of CC, 
those who have a go button for hard engage, and those who constantly disrupt. Not falls into the latter category. His passive lets you root foes with autos alone. His Q hook drags your target into your team. His E's massive area of effect allows you to slow the entire enemy team. And his ult can potentially stun the enemy team as it passes through them to your target. To top it all off, he does an incredible amount of damage for such a tanky CC heavy champ, and often does more damage than his own carry during most all-ins in the bot lane. For your items, start things off with a Relic Shield. In general, Moby Boots are the way to go, but Tank Boots are good too if you need them for your lane matchup or the enemy comp calls for them. You'll pretty much always want Solari as your mythic, and then you'll opt for Zeke's and Abyssal Mask to blow up the targets you go for. You can round things off with Knight's Vow, unless you need a tankier option for personal survivability, such as Gargoyle's Stoneplate. No list of OP tanks would be complete without Rel. Her ability to teamfight is completely unparalleled with insane wombo combo potential with a flash E into ult with the right team comp. With so much CC packed into her kit, you think she's only good for forcing fights, but she also has some other utility in her kit. Her Q gives a bit of ranged poke, has a shield breaker mechanic, and even provides some sustain for her laner, not something that many tanks have going for them. For your build, start off with Relic Shield and rush Tank Boots or Boots of Swiftness depending on the enemy comp. You'll generally want to grab Solari as your mythic, but if you're the only form of engage on your team, you'll want to go for Chem Tank. After that, pick up Zeke's, Dead Man's Plate, and either a Abyssal Mask or Thorn Mail. Finishing off our list, we have the bane of every ADC and Enchanter player in the world. You guessed it, Blitzcrank. The most satisfying thing about playing Blitzcrank is also what makes him such a good pick. You can miss 10 hooks in a row, but it just takes a single one landing to reel in a squishy carry or support for a free kill. On the other side of the matchup, it's incredibly frustrating to dodge so many in a row, only to be punished and killed for a single mistake. It's even more frustrating when you're watching your lane partner eat hook after hook and there's nothing you can do about it. Outside of the lane, it's the same story. Landing just a single hook can be the pick your team needs to take a tower, dragon, or even baron. Basically, you just need to land one good skill shot at the right time to potentially win the entire game. For items, you'll start off with steel shoulder guards and rush mobies to look for roams and picks all over the map. Unlike most champs, you won't prioritize a mythic as your first completed item. Instead, pick up Zeke's, which synergizes perfectly with his playstyle of hooking to make picks. After that, you'll either go Solari or Shirelia's depending on what your team needs more, and then finish it off with Frozen Heart and Abyssal Mask. Overall, patch 11.6 didn't shake up too much when it comes to the top supports in the meta. Tanks are still busted, and enchanters are mostly getting the short end of the stick. Sad face. But let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're there, answer our question of the day, hit that like and sub button, and just like do things, because that's really cool. That's it for the video, so best of luck improving, and I'll see you next time. It says to do something silly, but I already did that. On the teleprompter, it said to do something silly. Do something silly, Tia. Uh, go team. <laughs> <laughs>